that the foreign policy has only been shaped by two th- after 2014. So this 2014 centric approach of foreign policy undermines the people and the processes which were involved since 1947. Number one, sir. If you are asking me, I would say yes, 2014 was a watershed moment. Yes, things have changed better after 2014. Yes, our foreign policy has become more dynamic, more effective, more prominent after 2014. Many a time when we uh, read about Government of India stand or position or position paper, it seems that the foreign policy has only been shaped by after 2014. So this 2014 centric approach of foreign policy undermines the people and the processes which were involved since 1947. Number one, sir. Number two, India had a very stated position, Honorable Minister, sir, through you, Honorable Chairman. In a conflict between oppressor and the oppressed, India never was neutral. Between a fight between an elephant and an ant, if your neutrality helps the elephant, I think there somehow, recent uh, developments in Gaza, I think I, I didn't hear anything from government of India. And finally, between Ukraine and Russia, it was a very, very delicate, delicate chapter. We have our versions different from you, but whatever I think you could discuss, create a space, you did, but it could have been better. Dr. Manoj Kumar Jha's uh, observations. One, he asked, you know, the view of foreign policy is t- to 2014 centric. I don't think that is accurate. I think if you look at everything that I have said, uh, it is not that, you know, in some way, uh, I'm suggesting that what was, uh, what has been a continuing strain in our foreign policy, and I'll come to the Palestine issue particularly in that context. But since you are asking me, I would say, yes, 2014 was a watershed moment. Yes, things have changed better after 2014. Yes, our foreign policy has become more dynamic, more effective, more prominent after 2014. So I think I'm so glad you picked up the 2014 issue, and I hope you will be supportive of it. Uh, on uh, On the Gaza issue, and the Palestine issue, because some other members also raised it. Uh, We are very clear on Palestine. We support, sir, a two-state solution. We want a two-state solution with the two states living peacefully side by side. Some of the members suggested somewhere that our support or empathy for the Palestinians was, had changed. In fact, our financial support for the Palestinian Refugee Welfare Agency has gone up. Uh, uh, in the tenure of this government. Uh, I hope that honorable members would uh, appreciate that. The uh, issue was also raised about the neutrality, not my word, sir, this was the honorable member's clarification uh, request, uh, on the Ukraine situation. And uh, uh, Professor Jha suggested that he could do uh, my job better. I mean, that is certainly uh, his, his uh, you know, he is free to hold that opinion. What I do want to say is we have one been clear, publicly clear at the prime minister's level that this is not an era of war. We have consistently urged dialogue and diplomacy. When it comes to the impact of the war on Indian people or in the rest of the world, We have also done the right things about that. We have taken measures to soften the impact, whether it is of fuel or whether it is of uh, of, uh, food inflation, whether it is of fertilizer cost. So if it is your contention that our position has been uh, in in putting the interests of the Indian public uh, uh, first, I plead guilty to it. Yes, I put the interests of the Indian public first. It is my duty, it is my duty to ensure that fuel, fertilizer, food, the Indian public does not pay the cost of some other country's actions or some other region's actions. I, I think that, that is the way, in my view at least, foreign policy should be conducted.